Dear students, Assalamu alaikum. How are you? We are going to read lesson number two, My Early Home. The first place that I can well remember was a large pleasant meadow with a pond of clear water in it, some shady trees, leaned over it and rushes and water lilies grow as the deep and over the hedge on one side we looked into a ploughed field and on the other we looked over a gate at our master's house which stood by the roadside at the top of the meadow was a grove of fir trees and at the bottom a running brook overhung by a steep bank While I was young, I lived upon my mother's milk. As I could not eat grass, in the daytime I ran by her side and at night I lay down close by her. When it was hot, we used to stand by the pond in the shade of the trees. And when it was cold, we had a nice warm shed near the grove. As soon as I was old enough to eat grass, my mother used to go out to work in the daytime and come back in the evening. There were six young colts in the meadow beside me. They were older than I was. Some were nearly as large as grown-up horses. I used to run with them and had great fun. We used to gallop all together and round and round the field as hard as we could go. Sometimes we had rather rough play for they would frequently bite and kick as well as gallop. One day when there was a good deal of kicking, my mother whinnied to me to come to her and then she said, I wish you to pay attention to what I am going to say to you. The courts who live here are very good courts. But they are cart horse courts and of course they have not learned manners. You have been well bred and well born. Your father has a great name in these parts. And your grandfather owns a cup two years at the new market races. Your grandmother has the sweetest temper of any horse. I have a new and I think you have never seen me kick or bite. I hope you will grow up gentle and good and never learn bad ways. Do your work with a good will. Lift your feet up well when you trot. And never bite or kick even in play. I have never forgotten my mother's advice. I knew she was a wise old horse. And our master thought a great deal of her. Her name was Duchess. But he often called her Pat. Our master was a good kind man. He gave us good food and kind words. He spoke as kindly to us as he did to his little children. We were all fond of him and my mother loved him very much. When she saw him at the gate, she would neigh with joy and trot up to him. He would pat and stroke her and say, Well, old Pat, and how is your little Darky? I was a little dog, so he called me Darky. Then he would give me a piece of bread, which was very good. And sometimes he brought care for my mother. All the horses would come to him, but I think we were his favorites. My mother always took him to the town on a market day in a little gig. There was a poor boy, Dick, who sometimes came into our fields to pluck blackberries from the hedge. When he had eaten all he wanted, he would have what he called fun with the cords, 
throwing stones and sticks at them to make them gallop. We did not much mind him for we could gallop off but sometimes a stone would hit and hurt us. One day he was at this game and did not know that the master was in the next field. But he was there watching what was going on. Over the hedge he jumped in a snap and catching Dick by the arm. He gave him such a box on the ear as made him roar with the pain and surprise. As soon as we saw the master, we trotted up nearer to see what went on. Bad boy, he said. Bad boy. To chase the course. This is not the first time nor the second, but it shall be the last. Dear, take your money and go home. I shall not want you on my farm again. So we never saw Dick anymore. Old Daniel. The man who looked after the horse was just as gentle as our master. So we were well off. Okay, students. Listen as many times as you need and read. Goodbye. Allah Hafiz.